Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit, one God. Christ is in our midst. Forgive me. Today we hear one of the parables that I think are one of the best teaching parables in the Bible, maybe only for me next to the prodigal son. Here in, the, in this particular parable, we hear a sower went out to sow his seed. The ground is prepared. The sower goes out, and Christ is the sower. The seed is the word of God. It is his seed. It is not like the prophets who had to borrow seed. It is his. He created it. He prepared it. And now he is ready to sow it among us. We are the ground. Our souls are the field. And he comes to spread his word. It says that the sower went out. He left the bosom of the Father and became a man without ever leaving. He entered a world that he'd never left to be among us, to prepare a field for a rich harvest with the seed that he has. The seed that our Lord spread is the same for each and every person. It is not the fault of the sower if the seed falls on ground and does not grow. My dear ones, the church is constantly giving us reminders about how to prepare the field of our soul. It gives us opportunity to remove the weeds and the thorns, uh, to take out the cares and the distractions of this world. For instance, even coming here today for the liturgy, we had to prepare, or we should have prepared, to receive the Eucharist. St. Nicodemus of the Holy Mountain says this, be careful, however, to receive with proper preparation, which is with confession, fasting according to one's strength, with temperance, with prayer, with attentiveness, with a contrite heart, and with a clean conscience. This is why we don't just sew up without preparation and partake of the Eucharist. Especially as we look at this parable of the sower, without preparing, our heart is like sowing seed by the wayside or on the stoey ground or amidst the thorns. Preparation allows us to make the soil of our hearts fertile and ready to receive the seed so that it is growing 30 or 60 or 100 fold. During the liturgy, we will hear the choir sing, now let us lay aside all earthly cares. In the church, we have seasons of fasting, and we have seasons of feasts, this cycle of preparing, of growing, and of harvest. Our Lord is also constantly sending us reminders of what the good soil can bring. And I wanted to reiterate, especially the saint that we have today, who is not as well known among us, really almost because he was forgotten for a while. And this is St. Jacob of Hamatura. Uh, late in the 13th century at the monastery of the Domitian on Hamatura, uh, this is in Lebanon, St. Jacob began his ascetical life. Uh, later, when the monastery was destroyed uh, by uh, the Muslim Sultanate, he reestablished monasticism along the perimeter of the ruined monastery. In time, he actually rebuilt the monastery. And by the way, if you've ever seen pictures of the Hamatura Monastery, it looks like it was carved out of the rock. Um, I mean, it sits on the edge of a rock, of, of, of a hillside, and it looks like they, they literally just chiseled it out of there. It's, it's outstanding to look at. I, if you go home, look up this one. Um, his spiritual briskness, his, uh, his devotion, his popularity among the believers started to draw the attention again of the Muslim authorities. Um, and so to stop his enthusiasm, they arrested him, drug him from the holy mountain to Damascus, and, and there for a year he was tormented. Um, nevertheless, he never did give up his faith. Finally, uh, to solve the problem, they had him beheaded. But not only that, they burned his body to ensure that the church would not give him 
an honorable burial as a martyr. Um, and so from this point on, the saint is almost forgotten. Um, and this is due in part to the sufferings of the church under the various Muslim sultanates uh, that both weakened the Christian spiritual life and resulted also in a drop in literacy among the Christians. Um, additionally, all the manuscripts uh, or the information um, were lost or destroyed or forgotten. Uh, however, it is interesting that it is recorded that encounters by the pilgrims going to the monastery often saw visions of St. Jacob um, and many other people who sensed his presence and affirmed and authenticated his sainthood. Recently, it was shown, uh, and this is a recent discovery, uh, that a manuscript preserved in Balamad Monastery showed in the hagiography, meaning the compilation of the biblical uh, stories of the saints, um, that he was indeed commemorated on October 13th. And in 2002, this is how recent it was, for the first time an all-night prayer vigil was served for him. So for what, 400 years or so, maybe more, no, 600 years, he was finally again starting to be commemorated. St. Jacob has always been present with the faithful, appearing to some and blessing them. At one point, St. Jacob appeared to a woman in the church and told her that he would reveal to where his remains were. And sure enough, on, on, uh, on July 3rd of 2008, while they were fixing the floor of the church, they found the place that had his remains along with four others, one, one of also which included a, about a three-year-old child is what they were uh, coming up with. And so today, believers, pilgrims, are constantly reporting his appearance miraculous healings, and other grace-filled deeds by this particular saint. So my dear ones, it is also our duty to prepare the soil for also the generations to come. And this is why I call our purchase of our property on Chinden as our forever home. Everything we do there prepares a place for our children and our children's children. And I hope God allows me to live long enough to see that that temple is consecrated. Not that I want to kick the bucket right after it's consecrated. <laughs> but I would like to live at least to see that temple consecrated. Um, because when a temple is consecrated, it then grows roots. Uh, and it is from that point that we see baptisms and burials. We see the life of the church and we see generations and generations, and the church becomes literally a light on a hill. St. Mark says in his gospel in the fourth chapter, the kingdom of God as if, as if a man should scatter seed on the ground and should sleep by night and day, and the seed should sprout and grow, he himself does not know how. For the, yield, the earth yields crops by itself, First the blade, then the head, and after that the full grain in the head. But when the grain ripens immediately, he puts it to the sickle because the harvest has come. My dear ones, by cultivating the soil of your own soul, by prayers, fasting, by participating in the life of the church, and we'll talk about this a little bit more after the liturgy in our teaching today to this catechumen, by reading scripture, by knowing who the saints are, we allow that seed that God has given us to flourish in our lives. And when that seed is flourishing in our lives, other people see it as well, and they desire it. So my dear ones, remember that, that the cultivating of your soul, not only, you might say, enables you for eternal life, but also now sets up generations to come uh, to be part of that as well. In the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen.